up to the boys. Fox and Shane, set your mice free, no locks and chains. Do what you love, roll the dice. 50 50, we cold as ice. One thing cold, but a pretty time red. Hey. Kill it, bitch. Hey. 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 Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to Hobby Homies. We are your weekly tabletop podcast. I'm Shane, hanging out with Fox. Hi, guys. And, of course, Judge in the Void. That's right, I'm in the void. <laughs> Took his words from him right yeah. out of his mouth. That's right. right. Yeah, he sucked, he sucked it out of his <laughs> mouth. Accent that I don't know. Caught him off guard. Anyway. Give us uh, your best Irish. Great, right, I'll give you my best Irish accent. It's not that good, but whatever. It's pretty fucking good. It's not you need to tank about what you're doing there. <laughs> How are you lads going? Good. Yeah, great. What are we Thank doing you. today? Today we're talking about what makes a good convention. Because we've been to one we've now. We've been to PAX. I love yep. a good convention, I tell you what. Moab. This guy, now you've done it. <laughs> <laughs> we've been to CanCon. We were talking about it just the other day. There I were down the pub. We've been to many <laughs> I conventions. Heard to me what I love about a good convention. And what was it? I already told you. It's, <laughs> it's when the boys are there. That's what True. makes a good convention. It is when Facts. the boys are there. Yeah. So we've been to a few Let's conventions lately. Yeah, thank you, Churchy. <laughs> <laughs> been to a few conventions lately. And Oh my gosh, how did it live? Uh, well, yeah, we have, sorry. You been, slapped it. I've been ex excuse you. <laughs> excuse you. You win one arm wrestle. The mosquito was kidding. just like, what was that? What was that? <laughs> did someone Did I get bit by a mosquito? Did someone kiss me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. I'm com we're combating mosquitoes in here at the moment, but yep. this is like the Florida um swamplands. It is quite swampy. Gator territory. Yeah. But yes, even recently, you have been to a plethora of conventions. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Victorious. Yep. Yep. Moab. Um, Moab. And others. And others <laughs> coming to a convention near you. And so we thought, with our combined experience of having been to conventions, yep. when it comes to tabletop wargaming, what makes a good convention? Right. And if we were to handcraft our own perfect convention, what would it look like? What would it have? Where would it be? That's what I want to know. Where would it be? Okay, well, let's start there. Yeah. It needs to be on the top of Uluru to keep it central. <laughs> we can't do that anymore. All oh, right. Yeah. So, all right, anyways. At the bottom. Is, we'll see you next week. Mm. At the bottom. At the bottom. Base camp. So, yeah. You're right. Now, location, location, location. Yeah. Church, are you okay? Mozzie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. We call them mozzies. Mm. There's, not, there's a lot of wrong with us, and that's one of the things. Do they call them mozzies and they don't? Nah, That's I think it's a strange thing. thing. Yeah, mosquitoes, mosquitoes. Yes, where would it be? I mean, obviously mm. for us, it would be great if it was in Lara, <laughs> yeah, or <laughs> Lara Geelong, Victoria. Yeah, <laughs> it's got to be at a good uh, venue, right? It has to be obviously big enough. Yeah, parking is a big thing, right? Of course. So Moab was very limited by its parking. Sure, a lot of people were parking on the street, down the road, at the front of people's houses, over people's over people's driveways. Oh dear. Uh, doing that. There, were, <laughs> there was a thing like they were calling out a rego. They're like, black SUV, rego, you know, whatever. You're parked over someone's driveway. How do you think oh, that's okay? I don't know, dude. But if it were me, I'd be ringing the tow truck. Yeah, I wouldn't even, <laughs> I wouldn't be trying to call the convention. I'd be driving through the car. Yeah, I'd reverse into it and ride off my car and be like, <laughs> wow, well, I shouldn't have been there. Shouldn't have been there. So, but obviously yep. I don't make smart decisions. So maybe yep. someone would, would just call a tow truck. <laughs> but yeah, yep. I, um, I think what's cool about PAX, apart from the fact that it has no parking. It has good parking. My goodness. Under, Blow underground. My I didn't know but it was, we can go under. We can go under, but you got to get there early enough. Um, last year, uh, we parked there. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Oh, that's yep. good. I do like that. I think, it, okay. So it's got to have good parking. Great. Mm -hmm. It'll be able to park right there. Yeah. But I also think another compromise or added bonus is when it's walking distance from a trade station. Yeah. Public transport. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Because even just the fact that you can jump off a train at Southern Cross in Melbourne, yep. our main station there, which, you know, has so many connecting, I was going to say planes, <laughs> ground planes, wingless yep. ground planes. Yeah. Ground wheeled snakes. Yeah. If you will. What? Wheeled snakes. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Trains have wheels. Trains do have wheels. Yep. And snakes <laughs> don't. Exactly. Which is why you've specified that these snakes need to have wheels. That makes sense. You're welcome. Um, and the fact that you can just jump off, you don't have to jump on a connecting train or no. you don't have to jump on a tram or whatever. But you could though. You could though, for sure. But you can also just walk. Yeah. And that's cool. I think that's important. Mm -hmm. So uh, location, obviously, 
wherever you're located yeah but if it's in a main city where it's super accessible mm -hmm. um i do like the idea that if, if we didn't want to stay up in melbourne we could have just stayed here met at the train station at 7 a.m yeah caught it in been there Trains at eight in. yep gotten coffee on the way and been there before it opened absolutely it is possible it is possible it's possible um so because pax is the most recent in my memory yeah i'm gonna think about all the things i didn't like about pax sure and cool. try and use that to help me fix my version of PAX, <laughs> yeah. which eliminates all of the things I don't like and just makes it tabletop uh, wargaming. Yeah. Miniatures wargaming. It can definitely have an RPG section. Sure. I think if it's all things tabletop. I think it needs it. Yeah. It needs card games. It needs wargaming. It needs RPGs. Mm. Right. And board games as well. Yeah. So all of those. Yeah. If this was PAX is kind of hard because it has all the PC and video gaming side of things too. So you have to ignore all that. I do. I completely ignore it. <laughs> I know. I'm going to empty out that hole and just yep. make that the whole free play section. Perfect. So Moab did it well. They had a good mix of most things. Sure. Um, and CanCon also does it pretty well. Yeah. Um, Victorious was kind of like the gaming side, the playing of the games was a little bit uh segregated so it was like downstairs and all the trading stuff was like upstairs okay which similar, was kind of cool similar to cancon a little bit yeah cancon has like the yeah. big traders hall and then the games are played elsewhere uh, absolutely yeah. yep nice big central location where everyone's yeah all the vendors and that are um so i think that's a big big point right yeah it's like have it clear have it obvious what's where i was about to say that is one of the biggest things i find I would love for each section to be so clear. Yeah. Because even when you go into CanCon, um, you can walk through this big hall. And if you walk between two tables on one side, if you pick the right alley to walk up, yep. on one side, it might be Shatterpoint. And on the other side, it might be some other game that you don't yep. quite recognize. You walk two tables up, it's still Shatterpoint over there, but this game has changed into something else. It's yeah. like historical or whatever. Yeah. It would be really cool if things were sectioned and like, I mean, obviously you can't always do it. But nah. we're, we're painting an ideal world here. Yeah, 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 Everything's got big banners that quite clearly tells you what everything is. Big, like, barriers. But then you're losing table space. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You... I mean, imginary laser ba banners. <laughs> oh, okay. Like, sci-fi things that haven't been invented yet. Correct. No, sure. even if it's, like, um, all the tables had coloured um, cloth on them. See, that could be done. Yeah. It's like, oh, they're, they're on the blue tablecloth tables. They're that's playing all, Shatterpoint. Yeah, that's all Shatterpoint. Yeah. The black ones are X-Wing because yep. that's convenient. And like, yeah, <laughs> yep. something like that. And mm. then like the orange ones are indie games, so they may be different for each time. Yeah, but yeah, it yeah. has a little A4 thing yep. on the table, almost like the doctor's chart you can pick up and read yep. about what the game is. So if nice. two people are intensely having a game, you don't have to be like, excuse me, what, what is this? How do you play it? What yeah. is it? Where are you from? I know it's your turn and you guys are you know playing a quite stressful game here right now but, but i just want to sh shut up for a second <laughs> i just want to know about this game yeah yeah stuff like that just yep. clearly like you said everything easily identifiable yep clear what it is and yeah little information blurbs on mm. each table about what that thing is would also be cool so that would be really interrupt cool. games yeah but yeah yeah I and mean, like because like a lot of those games are new to people right like there's people out there that probably haven't seen age of sigma or like yeah. x-wing or or shadow point or so like yeah being like, oh, that's Star Wars. I know that yep. IP. Yeah. What game is it? You're like, oh, okay. It's called this. It's like you know, two player. It, it plays like this. And yeah. Yeah. That'd be that'd be cool. I saw someone post on the Geelong War Gamers thing last week, saying that they were looking for a group where they could play Warhammer, Age of Sigma, and more niche tabletop games. Sure. Like Underworlds and Mordheim. Okay. And I was like. People out here don't even know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't even know. They Corn don't... Underworld's niche. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Mordheim, okay, I can kind of understand. Yeah, that, it's maybe. fan driven nowadays. Yeah. Sure, yeah. But you might as well have said Blood Bowl and Underworlds. <laughs> <you know? laughs> yeah, well, uh, th th but that, that's the thing, right? Yeah, niche people games. Don't know. It's it's yeah. There's a whole there's a whole underbelly there. Yeah. Of games that people don't know about. A whole so, underworld. So <laughs> underworld. So yeah, clear. You know. This is what we're playing here. This is what we're playing over there. Great. And the vendors is, again, separate, well-organized, yeah, well-signed. Yeah. Because that was one thing in CanCon too. It was like there's 15 different buildings in this complex. What's where? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, you're in the 
Wallaby building. It's like, okay, where's that? Yeah. Oh, it's next to the Quokka building. <laughs> yeah. You idiot. It's like, what you call me? <laughs> yeah. You heard. <laughs> this is a Quokka ship. <laughs> ship. Got him. A Quokka ship. <laughs> Shake that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. He's probably a nice guy. <laughs> probably. He was <laughs> a nice guy. He's an exceptionally nice guy. <laughs> um, yeah. I. How do you feel about tournaments at these conventions? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Like getting there getting people there to play games and like tournaments is probably the driving force yeah. for those those players. There would be if if there was no tournaments there and there was only people there just to play games, there'd be half as many people. Yeah. If that. That's a great point cuz my I like I don't love tournaments. You know, I love the tournaments are there so when I walk through I can see people playing games. Yeah. And I understand that these big events is when you need to be able to host these big tournaments, these 128 player events. They have to happen at these conventions because there's no other time where you can justify having this massive space for tabletop games. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So we kind of got to consolidate a convention and tournament in Australia, especially. Yeah. So I get it, but I'm always like, oh man, it's just like, if you're playing a tournament, you're not really part of the convention. No, no, you're not. You go there, you're doing your, a completely separate thing and you finish up for the day. All the vendors are already closed. You yeah. Go. It's like it's separate. it's a whole day thing. Like, it's like the Sydney GT that was on sort of at the same time as Moab. Like being there, I'm like, first of all, I know I am not a tournament player yeah. because I'm just like, I, c- I oh, don't yeah. want to be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> don't yeah. get me wrong. It was good to see, but I'm like, yeah, yeah, nah, I could not do this. I was there for 45 minutes and I'm like, yep, this is a lot. Yeah. And yeah, so having those people there, yeah, like you said, they can't really enjoy the convention because they're there for their maybe two-day tournament. Yeah. And it's like, all right, I've got three three-hour games. Yeah. When have I got time? Like you got half an hour lunch break and that's it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And like w- I was talking to um, one of the people who was in the Age of Sigma tournament for CanCon. Oh, yeah. And they said, oh, you, you do have time. You can go across to the, because like say you finish your game half an hour early. But what if you don't? If you've played what full, if you're full playing- time, it's 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 rare that someone will play full time for all three games, but it, c- it could happen for sure. I think it happened to me at the GTA. <laughs> yeah, but that was also me. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's will we wear, <laughs> but it can happen. <laughs> Is this coming out before the next? One? No, it's okay. coming out after. Is that joke going to make sense? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're so- quantum jokes right here. <laughs> yeah, like- uh, I've actually will this just travel prepared through- a joke <laughs> through time for the future. <laughs> like, I'm actually you don't 14. get it now, but your kids will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep yep exactly i'm actually just like planting the seeds so that one day you accidentally mess up on a future episode in two weeks yep. <laughs> yeah um and they said you can yeah you finish a game early you're not going to use the full break in what between so what if you don't uh but even if you do yep. the last thing they felt like doing was walking all the way across to the vendor yeah store, right walking all the through the vendor store then getting back five minutes going before like, the game. Oh shit! I got, yeah. It's time for my game. Yeah. So yep. I think the tournaments are great. I almost think. I mean, <clears throat> board gamers are stuck in their ways, and if you're a tournament player, this is probably the worst idea imaginable. Yeah. But I feel like everyone should be. They should schedule it so if you're playing a five game tournament. Yeah. Everyone's actually only playing four games. You or everyone gets a buy. Oh yeah. And and during that buy. Because you're playing in a tournament, you've already paid your ticket for it. Yep. Yeah, I nailed that, by the way. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you, and then you flipped that at you. It's on yeah. <laughs> Because you've paid for your ticket for the tournament and yeah. because you being there has helped facilitate so much of the convention existing, yeah. during your buy, you go over there and you get 10% off at the vendors. Okay. So are you forcing them over to there? Okay. It's better for the vendors because now your traffic, which maybe you get 10% of tournament players, mm-hmm. now in theory you're getting 90%. Yep. So you're selling more stuff. They get a special thing if they go during their buy. It encourages them to go across there. I like it. Good. I like Let's it. Let's do it. That's a that's a fantastic contribution. I'm pretty awesome. Yeah. But yes, another thing I would ban is Games Workshop games. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and there goes all the tournament players. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because no one's playing tournaments of anything else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I Everyone agree. else, they're playing other games, want to be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's so true too because like you see it at conventions where it's like, 
that hall is 40k. Yeah. And that hall is Age of Sigma. Yeah. And that hall is everything else. Yeah. But see how much fun they're having? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Meanwhile, everyone in like the 40k and Age of Sigma are just like sweating and yelling at each other. I imagine they have fun. We just <laughs> we just have very <laughs> different pictures in our head because it's not fun for us. No. no. Maybe they're actually so good at the game and they know all the rules, so therefore they have fun. Oh, okay. Possibly. I don't know. Maybe that's the appeal. Nah, I don't believe. It. <laughs> nah, it's not for me. I don't even think I could do a like a five game, two day event for like Star Wars Shadowpoint. Bro, I couldn't play five games in a month. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I feel like the only time I could play five games of something in a row, well, I guess it's like three three games one day, two the next. Yeah. I mean, I just wouldn't want to. But if yeah. I, the only way I could make it work is if it was different games, new games that I was learning, and someone was just being like, "All right, so today, you're playing this." Sure. Oh, that's a cool idea. Like a so we got a like section. a round robin. Yeah, we got a section, but you don't know what you're playing. Yeah. <laughs> no one's gonna enter that, dude. You you just have to be like us and not care and be like, I'm gonna True. experience any war game that you that. So I'm gonna get a thing out of the hat. Go to table fourteen. You're playing Blood Bowl. All right. <laughs> Do I get a mulligan? <laughs> All right, go to table 15. <laughs> and you're playing Malifaux. <laughs> yeah, okay, maybe you get a do-over or something. But, I mean, maybe. Maybe yeah, that would be kind of yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, especially, like, because then, uh, like, an indie creator could have their game there, similar yep. to the RPGs where at PAX, where you can just have this little table that's yours. Yeah. Someone's randomly going to show up, and you're going to be like, hey, I'm teaching you this game. Yeah. It's about... Australian Bush Rangers in a post apocalyptic <laughs> alternate universe Australia. <laughs> but how does that um, work in a tournament sense? Oh, it's not a tournament. It's like a free play oh, okay. between, you know, there's one session at between nine and 12. Yep. Um, starts at, you know, you show up, you sign up at nine, sure. 9 30, you draw the thing out. Yeah. Game ends at 11 30. Yeah, cool. Piss off. And then there's another one from one to five. So you really just go there. You Maybe you can like write down, maybe there's a few games that are more than two players yeah so you can say oh we want to put our name in the hat for a four-player game they'll be like well actually there's a four-player slot uh tomorrow afternoon okay write your name down cool then they use their fantastic app that's not designed yet to just tell you what table to show up to <laughs> through random allocation <laughs> yeah. or something like that yeah yeah, yeah 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 i like it i like it interesting yeah interesting and okay the good thing is you don't have to do it <laughs> if you don't want it. if you don't want it yeah all right so cool at our dream convention we've got Good parking, yeah, <laughs> and good transport. Yes, uh, clear, concise, organized area. Yes, um, round robin gaming. So it's like play what you want to play. Yep, or play what is given to you. Or and, play what is given to you, and eat your veggies, and you'll enjoy it. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Um, I think it needs to have good facilities. Yeah, uh, as in bathrooms yep. and somewhere where you can sit down. Eat food, which yep. is probably sold to you at this convention. Wow. At the convention, right. you yeah, can yeah, buy yeah. the so food. So you don't have to go anywhere, dude. It's all there. And you know Food what? trucks. Yes. But like not potato on a stick. Like I'm talking like good food trucks. Wow. That's so disrespectful to potatoes. <laughs> and sticks actually now that I think about it. Yeah. I'm and? Attacking on two fronts. Sodium. Sodium. You no, disrespect sodium. sodium. <laughs> what? I don't think you can. <laughs> Watch me. Yeah. And I would like them to not be priced like food trucks, but I mean, yeah. beggars can't be cheap. But I mean, it's like, it's mobile. Yeah. I would also love, while you're talking about facilities and drinks, mm. uh, an actual tavern. Pax teased us with a with a a Elder, Bethesda Elder Scrolls tavern, Bethesda Tavern. It was Starfield in a tavern. Yeah, I wish it was Starfield <laughs> in a tavern. And so we're expecting a tavern. Yeah, Everyone's yeah. picturing a tavern in their head. And I knew it would be in that outdoor section, so it would be yeah. limited. But I expected like some partitions that like were our old studio walls. Right. Um, Like the round tables with little tavern seating. No, they had three wine barrels and a dumpling vendor. Yeah. And then, like, a tiny little display. Yeah, a pile of boxes and onions. It was the most Bethesda <laughs> tavern you could imagine. The DLC, too. You probably, we all paid for that. Yeah, we paid 12 bucks for that. Yeah. <laughs> 12 yeah, bucks just, a can, too. <laughs> yeah, it was 12 bucks a can. That's yep. the worst part. The dumplings never came properly. <laughs> <laughs> and the beers were overpriced. And yep. the, Yeah. So, an actual tavern would be cool. Yeah. 
The problem is, now I don't know if this is everyone, not just insurance. Yeah, I was gonna say, how do you stop yourself from just drinking in the tavern all day? You can't. Yeah, so only after five PM then. Yeah. Yeah. After all the games are played. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's perfect. <laughs> it sounds it. We've, so we've got most we've got the essentials, right? Yeah. We've got the games. The vendor, vendors have to be there. Of course. Because, oh, like, yeah. that's half the thing, right, is wandering around and finding all this cool stuff. Yeah. That you might have seen online, but then you're like, I actually have this in my hands right now. Yeah. I don't have to buy it from War and Peace. Yeah. Which I've looked at several times. It's right here. <laughs> these these multi-part gunslingers are in my hand right yeah. now. Yeah. I feel like, also, vendors at conventions, like this one that we're making up in our heads, mm-hmm. <laughs> need to have Deals. Oh, deals for days. Deals that you cannot get just by going home and then buying the exact same thing from them on their web store. Yep. And having it delivered to your house. At Moab, they had um, Dice Arcade there. Right. He was doing mad deals. See, that's what you need. He was doing, and he was cleaning up too. You just create that buzz. You want yeah. people getting excited coming through. Your, like, you look at how quickly, just have random loot boxes. Yeah, yeah. Imagine if War and Peace just had a loot box and it says, you're just getting a stack of miniatures in there, but you don't know what they are. Yeah. But uh, tell you what, it's three times the value of the stuff. Yeah, yeah. Or the other way around. <laughs> and you would just be like, oh, yes, mm. let me gamble and open a Pokemon booster of miniatures. Yeah. Because that's why the board game thing at PAX is so popular. Oh, yeah. They're always like, you will always get more than your money's worth. Yeah. The risk is maybe the games you won't love, but mm-hmm. they they just sell out because they actually have some sort of buzz, something unique that you yep. can't get elsewhere. That's it. Whereas you walk around other stalls and you're like, cool, thanks. Uh, I saw that online for cheaper because you've got a, stale, a sale on your store, but here it's, it's RIP or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. I do think the um, CanCon stalls are infinitely better than, say, the pack stalls. Yep, like, for sure. The pack stalls were all just um, like let's play games stores yeah and vr two big distributors in australia it's just like their shops oh okay and so it's like cool there you go there you go yeah yeah Yeah. what about um taking a leaf out of cancon and moab with like the second hand market oh it has to that Mm. shit's fire the sutherland shire gamers that put that together is just insane the work like i can't you know undersell this enough like the work there yeah is phenomenal yeah but we need them to do it for us. Yeah, <laughs> at our, yeah, at our, yeah. At our convention in our heads. Yeah, yeah. If they can, um, yeah. c- contact us. We'll tee it up. And yeah, <laughs> if you guys could run it at the convention in our heads, that would yeah. be sweet. Perfect. Because I love that. I love the buy sell swap. I love the yeah the second hand market because you can't really like can't really. That's another thing. Like you, at these conventions, you want to give someone an experience they can't get elsewhere. Yeah. You know that's sort of like. The tournaments with 128 players, you can't get that elsewhere. No. The um, weird sign up and get a random game that we made up in our heads. Yep. You can't get that elsewhere. A <laughs> no. tavern where you can sit down and drink with a bunch of other war gamers, watching people walk around, buy stuff, play war games, can't get that elsewhere. Discounts mm. at your stores. Stuff like that. Loot boxes, etc. So, yeah, you definitely want to have a secondhand store that you can't... Like, the only other thing that exists like that is Facebook Marketplace, and that shit's a a cesspool it's a dumpster fire yeah yeah (laughs) people like i have 10 intercessors half built not primed one's missing a shoe yeah one of them might be on this sprue here 150 bucks (laughs) (laughs) yeah 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 that's it that's the experience down to retail like no no no, no, i've painted them (laughs) yeah i primed them (laughs) their value has gone up i've half built them these 15 dollars with a primer right there (laughs) yeah like yeah i could tell (laughs) (laughs) i'm gonna have to strip that (laughs) yeah 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 Man, we should make this happen. How do we even? How do how do how do people start these things? They've That's gotta, yeah. They've got to start small, right? Surely, have to. CanCon started tiny. Yeah, but like thirty something years ago, or forty years ago, or something. So if we start now, <laughs> yeah, you're right. In forty happen. years, yeah. <laughs> we'll have maybe. our own CanCon. I mean, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. I feel like you get a crew there. You get like ten people playing games. Even like the vendors, probably not even to start with. Yeah. If you wanted to start a convention from scratch, you're going to ring around, you're going to find your local like scout hall or yeah. somewhere like, you know, like church that you can hire for a, for a weekend. Yeah. Um, you know, you're probably not going to have any, 
real like facilities as far as like food trucks or taverns or anything like that. But like a lot of these places have little canteens. You can probably get someone and they work in the deep fryer or or selling stubbies out of the fridge. Yeah. So like that's that's the thing is starting small and then working your way up and like you get twelve people there the first year. Hey, next year you got fifteen. Do you? And then you got twenty five, and then it just multiplies. Yeah. Do you think they started as tournaments first? I wonder. I wonder yeah. if CampCon started as a tournament like first and then kind of moved it and, and be like, and this year we're going to have two tournaments, 40K and Age of Sigma. Maybe. And then now that we've got 300 people who have bought tickets and have events, we can convince vendors and food trucks to come. Yep. Because in turn, they'll turn profits. So we'll put them over at the side of the hall. Oh, now the halls are full and we we have more room for vendors. Yep. And it's blowing up. Now People we are coming in off bigger the Bigger venue. Yeah. Yeah. If it started that way. We'll have to find out. Maybe. Let us know if you know, if you happen to know, if you're an Australian and you know yeah. anything about how these convert, these bigger ones like- MJ probably knows. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 Even like in the States, how mm. do the big ones start over there? Adepticon, yep. Gen Con, yep. all the cons. I think Gen Con was started by Gygax, I'm pretty sure. See? Just that, takes D&D? a minute or two. I think, maybe. That was a while know. ago then. It was a minute ago. I'm pretty sure it was Gen Con. Yeah. I mean, I Lake Geneva. Yeah. You're telling the story. The G- Geneva yeah. Convention. Yeah, I think. Oh, uh, yeah. I've been to the Geneva <laughs> Convention. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> that's our perfect. Uh, that's our convention. That's what we think would yep. make a good convention. Having all of those things. And also having your friends. Mm. Also, I love camping. So if we could implement that somehow too. <laughs> okay. Then. Yeah. We draw the line of camping. Okay. Cause, because last time. What's wrong with last time? I loved camping. You're like, let's bring all this Shatterpoint stuff so we can play it oh, at yeah, the yeah. campground. Did I say that? Yeah. And did we do it? No. <laughs> and we had a blast. <laughs> and I didn't break any of it. Maybe board games next time on a yeah. small trestle, which I think we were going to try and do, but storm was brewing. Oh, it was a bit windy, I think. Yeah, sure. Yeah. It is difficult to do all that. So yep. you just need to do that at the CanCon. Airbnb. I guess I'll have to. So we'll see you at CanCon. <laughs> That's coming up next. And our future convention in 40 years time. Shane Con. No. Maybe. Ship Con. Churchy. Shapes Con. Churchy Con. Churchy Con. <laughs> That's how we get people. Yeah. It's like Shane Con, 12. Fox Con, 8. <laughs> Churchy Con, 12,000. <laughs> Hobby Con. Hobby Con. Yeah. Homie Con. It's, These are all terrible mm, People names. might get that wrong impression with that one. <laughs> That's even, but that might work to our favor. <laughs> <laughs> True. We might be on the news. <laughs> all these bloods and crips show up. <laughs> <laughs> do, we, do we even have those? Not in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> is that what homies is? Is that us? <laughs> We're right. like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Not again. <laughs> yep. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank we you. hope to see you at our homie convention, yep. homie con. Uh, if not, we'll see you at CanCon in January. January 26th. For the, the Australian, 25 even, for the Australian. Oh, you're saying January 26th. Yeah. I thought you meant 2026. No. I was like, I mean, we'll be there, but you've skipped a year. <laughs> you've teleported forward in time. That's what we do. 25, 26. 25th, 26th. Cool. And maybe even the 24th. Who knows? Yeah, the world is our oyster and time is a construct and we'll see you there. Thanks for watching. Massive shout out to our patrons. For two bucks a month, you get early access to videos like this, lucky you, and other stuff on our channels, multiple channels. We do. We have two channels. Check out the second one. It's in the description below. Big shout out to these guys. I like that you said uh, lucky you for early access. Yeah. It's not luck. They paid for it. They do. One of the main benefits. And hey, the audio is working now. Uh, Legendaries, (laughs) MJ, Moose, (laughs) Fat Boy, Tom, Real One, Numa, that's you, The Goats, Bernsey, Mm -hmm. Fine Dinosaur, Hawkers, Gridlock, Journeyman, Maddie, Matt, Matt. Now that you can hear us, well, we've got Souls, Fishman, Ayu, Warrior, Churchy, Rad, Ollie, Pinny, Agro, Don Hua, Don, Pure Blind, Jax V, Mini Warmer, Oswald Gaming, Analog Line, Tim Smith, and Big Big Roach. So yeah, we had some technical issues for the last couple of weeks. Yes. Because, yes, yeah, <laughs> ongoing. Um, but it wasn't until we re- we'd recorded those episodes and then we're like, oh no, yeah. the audio on the Patreon. So we couldn't thank you guys enough at Patreon. You guys mean so much to us here at Hobby Homies and you make all this happen. So we appreciate you guys. You, We appreciate you. Yeah, you're willy wear people. We, we- and we love it and we love you a lot. <laughs> This is fine. (laughs) This is fine. (laughs) This is fine. (laughs) Bye-bye. Hooroo.
Do what you love, roll the dice, 50-50, we cold as ice, one thing cold.